good to be here. that are looking in from around the world have come to worship you, Lord, and I know you know that. You've been waiting for us just like we've been waiting for you, and this is a special time together, and I thank you, Lord, for doing this all these weeks and months now, and I pray that you'll give us a grace to do it for a long time to come. Just have your way tonight, and uh, let us accomplish everything that was designed for the 4th of November, 2020, when this hour comes to a close. And in your name, I ask these things. Amen. It is so good to be back here on Wednesday night. I missed last week. I'm sure most of you are aware of that. But did you tune in and watch Sing Over America? It was a phenomenal time together. We had three sessions in here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We had uh, people from 22 states drove in, flew in, and, um, and we were ecstatic about that because, again, just five weeks before that, we didn't even have a, a venue or an event scheduled. So I was thinking maybe five or six states would join us from around Texas but when we started taking hands and people started saying where they were from, Hawaii, California, New York, Minnesota, Florida, all across the country, it was great. Not only that, there were 44 more states tuned in. No, it was, 
A total of 46 states, so 24 more states were tuned in online, and 40 different nations were watching. Is That just blows me away. This really was a national worship gathering, and it had global impact. And that's what we were hoping God would accomplish way back when we set out to do this so long ago. I'm so glad the Lord saw us through because it looked like it wasn't going to happen. But I tell you what, Don Moen and Paul Wilbur and Brandon Roberson and the Gateway Worship Team and myself, we did everything that we could, and the people took the ball and ran with it. And we just all joined in together to uh, lift up the name of Jesus over our land. And aren't we glad we did that with all that's going on this week? And I'm not even going to go there. Whoever the, as, as Liz posted on Facebook, whoever the president's going to be, Jesus is still going to be the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. On that note, let's go to the prophetess Elizabeth over here. <laughs> I'm teasing, sweetie. But you better be evening. teasing. I am not a prophetess. <laughs> uh, hi. How are you? Welcome again. Here we are again. Yay. After a uh, a week lapse there, and for uh, for good reason for Sing Over America, as Terry mentioned. But here we are again uh, with you for uh, an hour with Jesus Wednesday. Yay, yay, yay. So let's say hello to some of you guys that have tuned in. There's Luis in Brazil, Lydia in North Carolina, JM in Singapore, Fred in Canada, Rodrigo in Brazil, Gary Guess in Oklahoma, our friends, hello. Lindy Lou in Wales, UK, Benito in Argentina, Ketty, uh, another regular in Argentina. There's Naro in Nagaland, India, and wow. there's uh, Christine in Massachusetts, Jacqueline in Jamaica, Maria in the Philippines, Bernadette in Washington, and Hannah in Indonesia, another regular, El Maria, another regular in Delaware, Pella in Alaska and Dave in Missouri, and of course, so many more. And so we want to welcome you again to an hour with Jesus. As, uh, as I mentioned before, it's, it's good to be back. And so I guess I'll give it over to Terry so he can start <laughs> worship. I know you guys are looking forward to it, so be blessed. Thank you, Miss Liz, and um, thank all of you for tuning in all around the world. And so... Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, there's no rules, but we don't like anybody watching. We like everybody participating. I pray already that his presence will touch you in your home tonight or wherever you're watching this. I know it's the middle of the night for some people, and that's all right. Some will be watching several hours later when the sun comes up for them. And um, we're just grateful for this opportunity, this great worship family. Hey, do you remember this one from my second CD? Let's just sing with it.
sink in all those things. He makes the wind to blow. Brings the winter snow. morning session at Sing Over America. Someone, we opened the mic up so people could come and pray over their own state, the own, their own city where they live and that kind of thing. And Thursday night, I hadn't felt like there had been the release that I was looking for. I always base it not on what's happening on the stage, of what's happening out with the people and I just felt like there was a tightness there and someone came up to pray and they said well I don't know about anybody else <laughs> but our lives were changed last night <laughs> and it's like the Lord said son once again get it through your noggin you do what you do and my spirit will do what only he can do and that includes changing a life when you don't think anything much is going on. And that's just like Jesus. <laughs> it's just like Jesus. So many others said, boy, the intensity of each service was just so off the charts. It's just what we needed. And just give the Lord praise. He made so much come together so quickly. You see, when God puts his hand on something, doors fly open. And when he doesn't, you just about kill yourself trying to force those big doors open. A little chorus I started putting together this afternoon. Oh, the beauty of the love of Jesus. Oh, the glory of redeeming grace. How 
my soul thrills to bow my heart in worship. So I'll sing to you until.
I hope you're feeling his presence tonight. Is it well with your soul, everything that concerns you? You know what? It concerns him. Therefore, we can say, it is well with my soul. Amen. Praise God. I tell you what, we, uh, I put so much physical and emotional energy in to the event last Thursday and Friday and Wednesday and Tuesday and Monday before that and Saturday after that tearing all the equipment down cramming my car full of keyboards and stands and everything else under the sun and um, for about the next two days you kind of walk crooked if you know what I mean <laughs> you get out of bed in the morning and part of your body is not where it should be Maybe that has to do with the fact that I'm not 25 anymore. I don't know. But let's don't go there. Anyway, Liz and I just, well, we, we had um, my niece and her friend were here, so we entertained them some on Saturday. Then we went out with a pastor and his wife, Mark Maynard, my good friend in St. Louis. Uh, went out with them on Sunday. And then I think come about Monday, we just kind of collapsed, and uh, which was fine. I mean... I would rather do that than put a half-baked half thing together and come out saying, hey, I feel great, let's go play golf. Um, there's something about giving everything within you, and I want to talk to you for a minute about that tonight. Um, there's a scripture, I think, in Colossians, but I'm not even positive if that's it, that says whatever you do, 
do heartily unto the Lord. And um, I think that we did that. All the volunteers that helped us for Sing Over America worked and worked and worked. Pat, my assistant, worked day in, day out with all of her regular duties for New Glory International, plus handling all the product over at the event center and lots and lots and lots of stuff. And so it just felt good, though, to give everything and uh, those are the things that mean the most to us. You know, the last several CDs that I've done, I have hired professional full orchestras instead of just doing it on my keyboard with, with fake violins and fake French horns and drums and all those things. Why? Because I believe in a ministry of excellence and I believe in whatever you do, do it heartily unto the Lord. Do your very best unto the Lord. You know, throughout my life, because of my musical gift, I have been awarded uh, several things, trophies through my teenage years. And, and uh, I, in fact, I have uh, a few here that I want to kind of highlight tonight uh, while I'm making this point of doing whatever you do with all that's within you and giving your best for God, no matter if it's cleaning your house, ladies, or going to the workplace, gentlemen or ladies, or being a good neighbor to your friends around, around your home, or serving in your church, or whatever it is, do it with all, I mean, do it as if the Lord had commissioned you because he really has. Anyway, this is, a, this is an award that I was presented at a uh, national worship uh, conference back in 2007 it says Kingdom Ministries presents the Kingdom Herald Award to Terry McAlman at the Throne Zone, Wor Throne Zone Worship Conference and I was surprised and delighted to receive this uh, very very heavy piece of crystal I guess that's what it is and uh, was humbled by that and received that with great appreciation and then there was uh, 2010. This is an award from the United Kingdom that says uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award for Outstanding Contribution to Worship Music from the Gospel Music Association of the UK in 2010. And uh, they invited me over to London and had a big presentation and Again, I did not feel worthy of this, but I received it in the spirit it was given with humility and uh, almost embarrassment, but I'm thankful that God recognized me that way. Now I want to set those two aside and bring out this big, huge <laughs> trophy here. This, this incredibly expensive $4 piece of wood says, Junior Winner, Loma Gaslight Links Miniature Golf Tournament, 1967. <laughs> I was the ripe old age of 12 years old. Now, I want you to know something. This probably means more to me than this guy or this guy. And I know you think, how can it? Well, these were wonderful tributes to me, and I really, truly appreciate that. But these were just a result of the gift that God has given me, and you know what? God gets all the glory for all of that, and well, he gets all the glory for anything good that comes from us, because he gives us the ability to do everything. That's why when you see sports, sports stars just, you know, bragging on their great gift, it's like, who do you think gave you the ability to do that? Who do you think gave you the endurance to spend hours in the weight room every day building up your body? Who do you think helped you practice six or seven hours a day to uh, really uh, make your craft as good as it could possibly be, whatever that might be? That all comes from God. But this little baby right here, you see, I worked and worked every day after school there was this new little miniature putt-putt course in our 
development. And I would get on my bike and ride up there. They didn't have very many people, so they had reduced the cost of a game to 10 cents. <laughs> this was right in my budget. I could do 10 cents a game. And so I would go up and practice, and um, they had this tournament coming up at the end of the year, and the winner would get a $10 cash uh, bill, a, a $10 bill, and a $25 U.S. savings bond. And so I practiced, and I worked, and I practiced, and if because I had played so much, I had earned the right to play two rounds in the tournament and take whatever my best score was of those two rounds. So I played the first round, and my opponent played, and he, he had a better score than I did, a lower score. I think I had maybe a, like um, a 34, and he had a 32, something like that. And so... So I was allowed to compete a second time. He didn't have that privilege because he hadn't scored enough rounds during the summer to merit that second round. So I start playing the second round of 18 holes, and he's following me around, counting my score and watching every putt that I make. And it came to the last hole, and I uh, made my last putt and scored a... 32, the same as uh, Reggie did, who was also a friend of mine. And so what did that mean? It meant that we were going into sudden death overtime. And so the first hole comes, and it takes him three putts to make his ball. And now it's my turn, and I get up, and I putt the ball, and I get a hole in one, and I win. And the whole place went crazy. That is me and Reggie and the girl that took our money behind the counter. That was the gallery, three of us. <laughs> Reggie didn't really go crazy. He kind of walked away quietly. But, <laughs> but I felt like I had just won the Masters or something. I, I was on cloud nine. How come? Because I had fought through that summer and practiced and practiced it says, what's the word say? To run the race with patience and endurance and, and stick it out. You know, whatever you're putting your hand to, do it heartily unto the Lord. You get where I'm going with that. Leave the past behind and reach out and grab that which is ahead of you and run the race with patience. And so that is the, the first time God ever rewarded me for sticking to something. And I know I'm talking to people who have who have done that throughout different times of your life, and you've just you've kept your hand on the plow and you just kept going, and finally you saw a breakthrough. Kind of like Sing Over America this year. We had to cancel in May. We had no choice. And so I tried to book it again in June, and they said, because of COVID-19, we're not booking for 90 days out. And so I tried again in July, and they said, because of COVID-19, we're not booking for 90 days out. And we had the same thing happen in August. The same thing happened in September. Come the end of September, I was just ready to throw the towel in. But I made one final email, one last-ditch effort to the Plano Event Center in Plano, Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas, and you know what? They had room for us. They had the right rate for us. And so we entered into that contract, and God was glorified before it was over. You know that when we entered into this way back when, I needed to sell something like 1,500 tickets just to pay the budget, just to pay the bills. And we didn't sell anywhere near that many, but because of donations... From people like yourselves, we got them from across the nation. We got them from uh, around the world. People sent money in from, from so many different places. We were able to pay every single bill and put money in the bank toward the next Sing Over America, which will happen in 2022. Not next year, but two years from now, which will be the next election cycle for the United States, which is the vision that God gave me for it, to sing over the land 
uh, before the people cast their vote and deal with principalities and powers, rulers in dark places. So that's what we've done. We kept our hand on the plow just long enough for God to say, now I can blow the doors open for you and make a roadway in the wilderness <laughs> and give you springs in the desert. Amen. I hope that blesses you tonight. Listen, whatever you're doing, don't lose heart. Don't give up. Keep on walking. Uh, did you ever see Nemo, Finding Nemo? Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. When you've done everything else but stand, just stand and see the glory of the Lord. He's going to come through for you. Our friends Robert and, es uh, Robert and Esther in the Netherlands came to just one or two days before they had to get out of their summer residence and, and move away for six months. They just had nothing left to do but stand, and God opened the door. How come? Because he's faithful. As the day is long, his mercies are right there for you, and his grace is sufficient for every one of your needs. If you've been sick in your body and you're trusting the Lord for healing, continue to take it before God and stand on his word. He heals all our diseases. Leave it in the hands of the Lord and then trust him with the results. You can't go wrong because we're talking about the one who made the heavens and the earth, whose wisdom is so far above our wisdom, we cannot comprehend it. But run with patience the race that is set before you. And maybe you'll get a hole-in-one on the first playoff hole of the miniature golf tournament. You know what? I'm not a great golfer, but I've had three real hole-in-ones on regular golf courses. That's crazy. I just call that the favor of God. And I have no idea why I just shared that with you. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Lord, for your word. Mm. your theme like I have made it mine he has shown me what is good he has shown me what is good It's to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with my God. He shown me what is good yes my God he has shown me what is good to do justly love mercy and to walk humbly with my God it's a great life verse even as you're giving everything for the Lord's glory those things are so important
program, but we would love to have you join us. Anything the Lord would lead you to do in a monthly way of just supporting our ministry helps us continue to do this work around the country and around the world. Liz will give you just information on that, but I just want to thank you for faithfully, I mean, some of you have been here every single week. Somebody told me this week they have not missed one time since we started the last week of March. And that was an auspicious beginning. It was terrible. But thanks for hanging with us. We hope this continues to grow and grow and grow and touch many, many thousands of people around the world with the manifest presence of God. That's the only reason I'm doing it, is that he would find his way into your heart, into your home, and change the atmosphere as you worship him. Hallelujah. Thanks so much. Lizzie? Yes, thank you for being with us. We hope that you enjoyed the service. And uh, don't forget to visit our our website, as Terry mentioned before, and uh, there you'll find his products, his CDs, a book. Also, if you'd like to make a uh, ministry gift, uh, you'll also find the uh, donate tab there. And uh, what else here? I'm sorry, I'm reading my notes. I'm not really good at memorizing this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to tell them about Sandy. And uh, if uh, you'd like to become one of our glory partners on a monthly basis, uh, that information is there as well on the website. So we thank you for any generous uh, support that you care to give. Aside from that, um, if you have not become a uh, YouTube subscriber, we invite you to do that, to become uh, part of our family here at uh, An Hour with Jesus on Wednesdays. And uh, next to that little red subscribe um, letter is there. There's a little bell, notification bell. It'll let you know whenever uh, we've uploaded a new uh, video. And also, uh, as Terry was reminding me, that this Saturday, excuse me, is another uh, behind the scenes uh, that we will be having at 11 a.m. Uh, Central Time. So uh, don't forget to, uh, to join us for that. So again, thank you for being with us again. It's good to be back. And we hope that you have a blessed week. And we will see you on Saturday. And Lizzie, I want to remind our partners that coming up on Monday night, I'm going to do another Zoom session. Okay. And so they can uh, look for a uh, link that will be posted uh, on the Facebook uh, 
new uh, glory partner page okay so on the glory partner page uh terry's telling me that he's going to do a zoom um for our partners yeah for the partners and uh, that'll be at what time and i guess all that information you'll probably find yeah, on his seven o'clock official uh facebook page he says it's 7 p.m central, yeah. central so again thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on saturday morning have a blessed week